Hello everyone. Today I'm going to solo mana tombs on a level 80 retribution paladin. And the talent tree that I use will look like this. The glyphs that I use for this build is the exact same like I used in my Stratholm gold farming video. I'm going to solo this dungeon and render everything that I find, so it's going to be raw gold that I'm going to make. I'm going to avoid using the auction house, but if you use this with for example selling the cloth or the ores that I'm about to get, well, then you will also make a lot more gold. If you're an engineer, you can also increase the speed of this run, but you don't really need it because you will only be able to do 5 mana tombs every single hour. So if you have some decent gear and you have engineering, well then there will also be a lot of downtime where you can't really do anything. So it's not mandatory to have these things. One thing you need to be aware of when you fight the first boss. If you pull this and there are still remaining enemies in the room, then all of these will be chain pulled together with the boss. That's why I also separated this into two different pools. In this next room, you'll now also meet a new enemy, the Ethel Priest. I usually try to mark these, but also prioritize killing them as fast as possible. By doing this, you'll avoid a lot of the healing they can do, and this will also increase the speed of your run. Another thing that is quite useful when you farm gold, is to use the different pillars or objects. This will line up side all the casters, and allow you to stack the enemies together a lot easier. In this room, I also highly recommend you to skip the Nexus Terror. This has a lot of health and also fear, which can be quite annoying and also do a lot of damage to you. So I usually just try to skip these and go for the remaining enemies. However, if you accidentally pull a Nexus Terror, then remember you can always use your Hammer of Justice or Holy Wrath. This will stun them, and when they're stunned, they're not able to fear you. In the room that I'm currently in, a new enemy has also appeared. This is the Evil Darkcasters. These will attempt to mana burn you, so you have to be careful of this. You might even have to prioritize killing these before the priest. At this point, you are now also ready for the second boss in the dungeon. This one you might have to be a bit careful about, so don't pull too many enemies at the same time as you're fighting the boss. The reason for this is because once in a while it will attempt to stun you, and when you're stunned, you're going to take a lot of damage. An easy way to avoid the stun, or well to get out of the stun, is to use your hand of freedom. And if you have leveled mining, you can also mine this when you have slain it. If you have leveled mining, you can easily make another 100 to 150 gold every single hour, but this will also require you to use the auction house. For the rest of the dungeon, there is only one thing you need to be aware of, and that's the final boss. If you pull this, then all the other enemies in the room will be chain pulled together with this, so make sure to kill a few of them before you pull the final boss. I'm going to add in some music, and at the end of the video, you can see the gold that I made, how you can easily vendor and repair your gear in next to no time, but also the gear that I used. Alright, so here we also finished the dungeon in around 10 minutes. Like I mentioned, you don't really need engineering and that decent gear to be able to do the dungeon in around 12 minutes. The amazing thing about this dungeon is that you can render right outside. And this you can do right here at the NPC. So by clearing the dungeon, rendering and also resetting and getting back in, I spent around 10 and a half minutes. Remember, you can only do 5 dungeons every single hour, so you can easily spend 12 minutes doing everything and getting ready for the next dungeon. Nonetheless, then I've made around 500 gold every single hour, and you can also increase this number by selling the ores and the cloth on the auction house. For those of you wondering about the gear that I use, then I mainly just use my PvP items when I do this. 
but you can also do it with PvE, green and blue items. I also use a tanking trinket for my Shulner Rook on a heroic mode from the second boss. This will reduce the damage that I take, but also increase the health that I have. Nonetheless, then I hope you enjoy my gold making videos, and in the future there will be a lot more of these, including a lot of Wrath of the Lich King helpful tips and tricks. As always, thank you so much for watching, and have an amazing day. Peace.